Hi, okay, so it's been a little while since I've done an update about the ADSB project. I think the last video I made, uh, we had the ADSB 1090, which was a single band receiver, um, and that was in beta. Well, we're still in beta, but we have a new receiver now. We've been shipping this for most of this year. It's the ADSB 1090U, it's this guy. So the front looks pretty much the same. The back has something new. Uh, there is a TICC1312, which is where my finger is. Oh, wow, the lighting's not great, but you can kind of see it. Um, and that is a tunable sub gigahertz uh, RF MCU, so that has a microcontroller and a receiver built in. It's commonly used for things like uh, gas meters and car key fobs, but we're using it to receive 978 megahertz UAT. So that's both uh, transmissions directly from aircraft, little ADSB packets, uh, as well as uplinks from ground stations in the form of uh, FISB, so for flight information services, um, like weather and stuff like that, as well as TISB, which is traffic rebroadcasts from ground stations. So that's actually pretty cool because it lets us track targets that don't even show up on regular ADSB, like military aircraft, where the FAA might be sharing a ground track of the aircraft uh, over FISB, uh, sorry, over TISB, but uh, not the aircraft isn't transmitting itself directly. Uh, we also have a couple of additional products. So of course, since uh, you know we've updated the ADSB 1090 to be dual band, we've also updated the uh, enclosure for it to be a dual band enclosure as well. So you have both a uh, 1090 megahertz antenna and a sub gigahertz antenna. These are of course just standard SMA connectors that can uh, be taken off and replaced with a feed line or whatever else you wanna put on there. Um, it's still powered over USB-C, so you just plug it in and then it turns on and does everything you want. Um, we've pushed quite a number of updates uh, to the firmware this year. So in addition to the firmware being dual band and having much better filtering and a bunch of other improvements, uh, we also have a pretty mature network bootloader at this point. So you can do uh, over the air firmware updates um, over the network console, which is available as just a WebSocket. So you can write your own Python program, whatever you like. Um, and we also have a pretty minus web page that I might show off in a future video uh, that gives you live statistics of how many packets you're capturing in the form of a bunch of plots. Um, it also lets you update the firmware just by clicking a button and giving it a .ota file that we produce with every firmware release. Um, in addition to the 1090U, we've created a companion board that enables PoE. Uh, this is called the PoE Pant. We originally were calling it the PoE Hat, but uh, since the company is Pants for Birds, people in Discord server, when I said, hey, it's a, it's a hat, they were like, are you dumb? It's a pant. I'm like, oh, you're right, it's a pant. Uh, so the, it, this PoE Pant attaches to the ADSB 1090U via pin headers, just like that. Uh, and then you have a pretty compact dual band receiver with PoE. Um, 802.3 AF, so it's the actively negotiated type, not the type that fries things if you plug it into the wrong port. Um, and that was actually a pretty nice jumping off stone to a uh, uh, industrial receiver that we built uh, in the hope of gathering some commercial customers. Um, so this is the GS3M PoE. It is uh, pretty much a conformal coded ADSB 1090U and uh, PoE uh, pant with some other bits and bobs in a custom aluminum uh, IP65 weatherproof case, um, and it's got a weatherproof Ethernet connector down here. It's just a standard RJ45. I've been annoyed before by M12 X coded connectors and you know custom bayonet lock things and whatever. So this uh, grommet system allows you to use a standard outdoor rated Ethernet cable. Uh, you pull some of the strain relief off of it, and then you can feed it through here and connect it uh, using your cable of choice. Uh, beyond that, we have a few additional products. Um, centered around this. So this is the ADSB M1090. Uh, it is a solder down module that includes our custom 1090 megahertz RF front end from the ADSB 1090 and 1090U. Um, but it also breaks out all these pads in the back. Uh, let's see if you can focus there. Yep. Uh, and that lets you connect to external devices over SPI. So you can connect to an external ESP32 for networking uh, with Wi-Fi or Ethernet. You can connect to a CC1312 if you want to add that uh, dual band receive. Um, and you can also add an external uh, RF front end in the form of a separate um, LNA on the RF input to this if you want to add additional gain. Or you can add filters or whatever else you want to really customize the performance for the environment that you're looking for. We have an eval board for this. This is the 1090, uh, ADSB M1090 eval board. Uh, you can see that there. Uh, and it has a, a separate uh, switchable LNA front end. This is a prototype board that I think I grabbed one of the parts on it. But the ones we ship, they have an LNA populated there. And then there's two capacitors with some nice arrows that show you how to flip the capacitor around if you want to enable or disable the external gain stage, just to, if you want to see how that impacts performance. Uh, and then there's, of course, all of the extra pins broken out if you want to attach uh, ESP32 or a CC1312 externally to get all those additional features of an ADSB 1090U, but as kind of a blob of dev board. So you can really do whatever you want with it. 
Uh, that is most of what we've done for this year. There's a bunch of, uh, or I guess last year at this point, um, I have a number of additional projects I'm working on and some new developments with the 1090U. Um, this year, we'd like to work on adding remote ID out and in, um, and maybe some additional protocols in addition to UAT, since the CC1312 can totally be retuned. Um, but I'd love to hear what you think about the project. And if you have any questions or ideas for how, where things should go, uh, maybe you can leave a comment in the YouTube uh, uh, comment section, or you can join our Discord and, and chat with us there. Um, there's been a lot of people that have been involved in this project uh, in testing things out, sharing their ideas, uh, and it's been really fun to see the enthusiasm for open source ADSP receivers. We've seen these uh, in you know general aviation applications as electronic flight bag devices, similar to the Four Flight Century. We've seen this uh, in UAVs. People have been integrating this with iNav and plugging it directly into their flight controllers for on-screen overlays of nearby air traffic. And I've even seen people put them into lots of embedded projects. Um, including some really cool miniature cockpit displays that people use in FPV airplanes, where they actually are overlaying live air traffic onto a miniature moving map on a tiny little OLED that they're looking at with their FPV camera in their scale cockpit. So it, it's been it's been a super fun ride this year, last year, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, where things go in 2026.